I'm going to show you how to do the clipping mask. Um, I'm <clears throat> in Photoshop right now. I'm going to create a new document first. I'm going to go 20 by 16 um, horizontally to hit create. That's a little easier just to start with that. I have all my images <clears throat> in a separate folder, and now they're on a different desktop. Um, so that I can collect them all and just drag them right into the folder, right into the image. And if I just hit the check mark, I'll accept them all at different sizes. Right now, as they are, I'll worry about all that stuff later. So we've got a bunch of different images from the year. Some are, you can see, I try to do a large image search in Google, but I still get some little ones occasionally. So there we have everything. So the first thing I want to do is just resize these. So I'm going to go to Edit and a Free Transform, the keyboard shortcut Command-T. That makes things a lot quicker. Now hold down Shift so that you get a right proportions. Otherwise, your images are going to wind up like this, and no one really wants to see that. So if we hold down Shift and just make them small for now, double-click to accept. Um, yeah, we don't want to do that. I'm on the wrong tool, so I want to make sure that I'm on the Move tool so I can just select my next piece and hit Command-T or Control or um, Alt for Windows people. Resize it. That one's not too bad. I'm going to move it over. Same thing, Command-T. So I'm going to do that with all of these. And then I'm going to worry about taking out the background. So, And I can always resize them again later, too, which is nice. Um, because if you notice, if you look over here in the windows, they're all in their own separate windows. So that's a good thing. Whoops. Didn't hold down Shift. Okay, so there's that. Click the next one, Command-T. Now, even though it's behind it, um, <clears throat> your windows should auto-select. So even though it's, it's I'll move it over here so I can see a little better. This guy's good. He's good. This one I want to keep big, but I'm going to resize it just to get everybody in there later on. So if you oh, up here you have auto select, that helps you go through the layer. Uh, that's not checked. You definitely want to check that. It makes it easier to select these things. Shrink him down, move him over so I can see him a little bit. Take Carol. Oh, I had a picture of the Tiger King himself. You know what? I'm going to get rid of her. I'm just going to erase her. Just delete that layer because I just realized I have one over here. I think I'd rather use that one. Anyway, so I'm resizing all this. Double clicking or hit the check up here to save it. Nope, wrong one. Selecting that. Command T. So there are a lot of images which is what we want. It's at about 20 images. I'm not sure how many I have. I didn't count them, but you'll find that you're going to need a bunch. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is to be able to get rid of all of the background. Now, I don't want to just erase stuff. I want to be able to um, do this with non-destructively. So I want masks. So whatever image I'm going to use, I'm going to start with Eddie there. I'm just going to click the mask icon. Boom. And then I'm going to use the brush. Remember, black conceals. So if I'm painting black, I'm hiding something. So um, I can paint over that, and that'll erase it. So if I want to get something larger, <clears throat> I can just click up here. And you got a choice. You can use a soft brown or a hard brush. It doesn't have to be round, necessarily. But that'll give you a nice, soft, kind of dreamy edge, if you like. Um, so if you go around something like this, you can erase and leave a little bit of the black, or you can switch to a hard brush, hard edge brush, and then you get a very distinct, uh, sharp outline like that. So depending on what you're doing, um, you know, you want to experiment, maybe even use both. So if it has a very crisp edge, sometimes that's the easier way to go, or the better way to go. What we want to do is try to get rid of those square edges. We want, don't want to see the edges of the photograph, the end of the frame. So if we can kind of round that out, I just sort of cut off part of his head, but those corners aren't going to look very good. So that's him for now. And then I switch to, and I can move this. So same thing. So I want to mask each layer, and then I want to use the brush and just kind of paint away some of that stuff. And then you, you resize the brush using the brackets, uh, the two, the keyboard the key with the two brackets on it that makes them go up or down makes your brush get larger the keyboard so I'm going to switch to a soft edge brush so I think it looks better for this uh, for what I'm doing here 
but it's a little too big. And then you can adjust how much um, feathering and, and things in the brush panel itself. You also want to take a look at the other image and see how you, I missed some of it there. And when you move it to a white background, you can definitely see that stuff. So you may want to either hide everything else or just kind of move that around so you can see that. So try to get rid of those edges. That way it looks a little more organic, a little more like the things actually belong there. Okay, so let's and then I'm gonna move these around and resize them so that we get things, um, you know, where they would, should be. And you can see I missed the big corner there on the, the COVID thing, but that's okay. So just for shortness sake, let's say I arrange these all and they all look good. Okay, now I'm gonna make another layer and that's gonna be a text layer. So I'm gonna hit the new layer and right here it's down on the bottom, that's okay. It's actually, we're gonna have to move it down to the very bottom later on. I can do that right now. And using the text tool, I'm gonna to think about the word that I am using to describe this year. That's um, another lost there it is. So that word, we're gonna look at very large font, 250, you can go up to, I think, 1200. We probably wanna to go to 500 at least. And you can manipulate that a little more later on. I click on that, and it can be a long word, it can be two words, and I can't really see it now because it's at the bottom, so if I move that up just to see it a little better, or I can do this, I can click and drag and then hide all of my, hide all of my other stuff. Now, you can't really see that whatsoever because I have some things adjusted there in the character setting, so right now I have... Um, as far as I got it selected, but I have some spacing at 23 and it's 500 size font, so that's you know, that's not going to give you um, the spacing, the line spacing needs to be pretty similar so that you can see it. And this is obviously a little too big of a font. So if I select all of this, I can make that quite a bit smaller. Try 300. It's a little better, but it's still not great. But what I do want is a thick font. You can hit um, uh, bold right there. You can widen it. I can take just some of the words. Uh, if you do the words separately, you can take some of them and adjust those. Let's see if we can highlight it and make them wider. So I can make fire wider. I can make dumpster a little narrower. So maybe I can fit them all together. Oops. This would be 90, not 900. Okay, and then the spacing in between, I can adjust the height, and so on. And then basically all you have to know, so if I wanted to, I could rasterize this under layer. I could go and rasterize it, and then I can, if I rasterize the type, that turns it into pixels, which means then I can adjust it using the um, free transform tool so I could stretch it out that way to make it bigger. What you can't really do though is make it any thicker or, or change the spelling or anything else like that. That's all done. Um, so now what I want to do just to quickly show you how to do the clipping mask is to take all of these other items actually I'm going to accept that first. Take all these other pictures and show them. And then I want to highlight those. Everything but dumpster fire. And then I'm going to right click and then there's create clipping mask. Boom. And what it does is it just moves all of those, cuts all of those things out in the shape of the words. And I can still move them around. I've got every layer selected though, but if I use my move tool, I can still move things around to squeeze people into the spaces that I want so that you can see their faces where I want them to be. Okay, so the thicker the words, the better this looks the thicker the letters. So choose a font that's very fat and then um, thicken it up. This is not a very fat font, but this does show you the idea. And all you have to do is right click and um, clip it. But you want to make sure you've got made a mask of all of them first so that you hide all the other background stuff. Now, if you want to get rid of this and you want to take a look back and see, okay, I don't like that at all, just right click again and hit uh, release clipping mask and it puts it back the way it was. So now you can see everything again. You can rearrange stuff 
Uh, of course, now they're all selected, so I can't. But you can rearrange things so that they fit a little bit better, so that you've got the words all covered up. Or you could erase that or hide that text layer and make a new text layer to make something better. That's pretty much it. Um, just the trick is going to be erasing and rearranging things and finding the images. Any other questions? Hit me in class.